Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger here, and it's time to get first blood. And by get first blood, I mean give it up first blood. Yes, excellent. They beat me to the bush. I have died. How unfortunate. Anyways, it's time for a Swain build. We're gonna take a look at him today. We're gonna play him in the mid lane, and we're going to, uh... We're gonna kill everyone now, because you don't, uh... You make the badger angry when you kill him like that. So, yeah. We're gonna kill people. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about items. We're gonna talk about runes. We're gonna talk about masteries and a little bit of strategy and why you shouldn't 2v1 me either because I, that also makes me unhappy and while I dodge all your nonsense. So let's start off at level one. We started with a sapphire crystal and a couple health pots. We're gonna deal with these items and build them into things and that extra mana from that sapphire crystal is nice and we also don't have to really worry about mana regeneration from a Doran's ring because of our awesome passive which we will talk about. We'll go over all of his abilities first. First is his passive. Whenever Swain kills an enemy unit, he receives 9 mana plus 1 for each level. So while you farm minions, you're getting mana back. It's very, very helpful. It allows you to poke while in lane. So the better you farm, the more mana you're going to get back and the more poking you're allowed to do. First, we're going to do a little bit of a fight with Ash. We have our Jungle Karma. Yeah, that's what's up. She's coming in. We're going to go ahead and pick up a kill on Ash. Um, Jungle Karma is my buddy. Bonus. And, uh... He's rocking Jungle Karma because in a previous video, somebody laughed at the enemy team that had Jungle Karma. And we just wanted to let you know that, yeah, it's weird, but it, it does work. It's stupid that it does, but it does for now. Anyways, maybe that'll change next season. We'll find out. But yes, gonna kill Ash. That will help me out. Um, the main thing that I, I always try to let people know about whenever... There are, oh, also, by the way, Lee Sin's coming up the river. I'm just trapping him to make sure he doesn't get away from our AD carry. I'm going to go ahead and pick up an assist on this, too. So, uh, map awareness gets you assists, and those are also helpful. But uh, one thing I just always try to say, in any games where I'm 2v1'd in a lane, or if you get 2v1'd either in top or in mid or wherever, if they decide to switch it up on you, the main thing you need to do is tell your jungler to gank that lane aggressively multiple times early because that will make all the dis or difference. If uh, you can get a successful gank off and get a kill, um, then you can win the lane quite easily because you'll be ahead of them in experience since they're sapping experience away from each other. So um, you usually have a good advantage there and uh, it usually works out really well because right now I'm level 6 and they're level 4 so I can do a lot of damage to them. That first trip back to base though, we did finish off our Catalyst because it's awesome while laning is going on. It's going to give us health and mana back to us whenever we hit a level. So that's going to be very helpful while laning. It's also just a good item. and gets you kind of beefy too. So we're working on that and we're going to poke down this ash as much as we can while we are in lane. Let's go ahead and talk about the rest of our abilities. At level 1, I usually will put a point either into my W or into my E. You put one into your W if you're playing smart and safe. If you want to play greedy, you do what I do and you put a point into your E, which is your Torment. Swain afflicts a target dealing magic damage to them. It also causes them to take increased damage from Swain's attacks for the next 4 seconds. So that is what's going on with that ability. We're going to max that out first. At level 2, put a point into your Never Move, which is your W. Um, that is your mark of that area around. After a short delay, it will go off and it will grab them and it will root them for a uh, two seconds. It'll also deal a lot of damage. There, we're going to root in the Thresh. We're also going to hit him with that E and that Q. It's going to deal a lot of damage. It's going to be fun. We're going to kill them. Here, Lee Sin shows up. But if I stick around with my teammate, we're going to be able to pick up another kill on him after we flash to pick that up. And I don't know how we don't get her rooted there, but she's going to escape with like one standard attack away from dying. But that's okay. We got a couple kills, and that will definitely help out as the game goes on. But that's your never move. We talked about that. It will root them for that two seconds and deal a lot of damage. We're going to max that out. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I max out my Q second. Sometimes I max that out second. Lately, I've been kind of doing them both at the same time because you get a lot of damage from never move. I don't know why. It just feels great. Anyways, then there is your Q ability. Put a point into that, and uh, like I said, max it out however you want to. Main thing is to max your E out first, but that's your Decrepify. Um, you set a, a Raven, it cripples the enemy's target, it slows them for the next three seconds, it does damage, it's awesome. We're going to get into another fight because Jinx is here, and uh, we're going to kill Ash again because, you know, have your team with you. They took down Bot Turret, that's the other thing. They had the 2v1 down there. And uh, you got to push the tower is what you're really trying to do. And they were trying to do it against me, but it's a little bit harder against Swain, especially once he hits level 6. He can clear really well because of his ultimate, which is Ravenous Flock. You can toggle this on and off. 
Um, it's got a short cooldown in between the toggles, but whenever you turn it on, you will hit up to, I believe, three nearby enemies um, with a raven. It's going to deal magic damage. You also get healed from them, so you're just this big giant death dealing machine that heals so you can clear waves really fast and get a lot of life back when doing this here ash gets caught out again and i am now unstoppable but this is what happens don't kill me early i'm not usually happy about it and people usually are going to get killed for it um earlier not too long ago we did pick up our rod of ages that's the first thing you're going to want to pick up it's pretty awesome it's going to give you that health it's going to give you that mana and it's going to give you ap it'll also scale as you have the item um, every, what is it, two minutes, 90 seconds, something like that, it, it scales you a little bit more until it stacks completely. So it's really good early because it scales through mid-game, and that is what you're going to want to get first off. I've also finished off my boots at this point with Magic Penetration Boots, and Ash gets away there with about 10 health. So lucky Ash, although I've poked on her so much she's just behind at this point, so that's quite unfortunate for her. Um, but on another note, Mordekaiser on their team's getting super fed, so that's going to be fun to deal with later. Uh, so, those are our abilities. We're going to max out that E first, and that's what we're going to do. Here's another picking on Ash. It's just fun. And then we're going to make her not move, and then we're just, yeah, you're dead. Sorry. Um, but I'll take gold. It's helpful. Yes. Yes, it is. It's about time to head back to base. We have lots of gold, because we have lots of kills. And, uh, actually, what are we going to do? We're going to try to go stop... Oh, yeah, we're going to go try to stop Mordekaiser. This is going to hurt a little bit, though. Yeah, I'm going to run away. Um, yeah, so those are your abilities. Max out that E first. Then, if you want to max out your W or your Q... Q is also helpful, obviously, if you max that out. It's up to you. I'm going to leave that up to you. Personal preference move right there. And then, obviously, you put points into your ultimate at levels 6, 11, and 16. Back at base this time, we picked up a needlessly large rod. And at this point, I'd say most Swain builds start th with the Rod of Ages. And then a lot of them are all very similar from what I've seen. And I don't, not that I don't like them. They work fine. I like this one more because it just, I think it just deals more damage more. And it, it, especially if you're off to a very powerful start like how I currently am, it, it works out even better. So um, we're going to show you which direction this goes. We're going to try to fight Mordekaiser again here. And I think I'm going to die because I overcommit to coming back. So... Um, that, that ultimate, how dare it. I did pick up an assist though, so helpful. But Mordekaiser hurts, and that death fire grasp is also going to hurt. So yes, I'm back at base because I'm dead. But we did pick up a blasting wand, and we're going to team that up with that needlessly large rod, and that will become our death cap. Now, some Swain builds don't build death caps at all, and that's fine. It's because they kind of go more utility, but the death cap is such an insane amount of damage with everything else, especially with that E ability when you do all that increased damage afterward. You just blow people up. Things are going to die. There, Ash dies again. Thresh is going to flash away. We're not going to be able to catch him up. But uh, it's just it's absurd damage, and we're going to get other things that you find it typically in a Swain kit, but just in a different order, because when you're ahead... You don't need as much as that of that survivability right away in a game because you have so much damage, you can kill people so quickly. And then you also have your ultimate, which is giving you health back. And we're going to also take advantage of that coming out in a little bit with an item um, to get some survivability later on. You probably know what I'm even already talking about, but we'll leave it as a secret in case you don't. So we finished off that death cap, so we have that rod and the death cap and our boots, which at this point is, I mean, it's like 351 AP roughly, I think, right now, which is... Pretty awesome for 20 minutes in the game. And, uh, yeah. Another nice thing, and I know a lot of people are probably thinking or asking, or maybe you're not asking, you're just thinking it. What about just mana regen? You eat so much mana up when you're using your ultimate. Yes, you kind of do. But if you are kind of careful, you know, you don't have to try that hard. Um, blue buff's helpful. And we're going to get a massive team fight, by the way. Nasus got caught out, but we're going to kill everybody, and I don't think anybody's going to die. Because that's what we do. I think one of them won't die because they're not around. Anyways, you're probably thinking, you know, that mana regeneration. Why don't I pick up an Athene's Unholy Grail? Like, that? What, what's wrong with that? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's going to give you some magic resist and um, mana regeneration, and it's a good item. But the problem is there's other better items, especially for damage. And having that Rod of Ages, it gives you enough base mana that that's really very helpful. And like I said, whenever you're leveling up, you're going to be getting mana back. So you're never going to just completely be running out of mana constantly unless you're just spamming it way too often and leaving it on just for no reason so you really shouldn't have a problem and once again go hopefully get a blue buff you know you're you're the mid you're the ap carry on your team you should 
probably be getting those after you know the second or third one. So um, yeah, they're helpful. So just make sure you don't burn your mana on purpose. We also fix these with runes a little bit, but we can talk about that in a second. So uh, the last trip back, Mordekaiser hurts, and plus we need man magic resist anyways, because we don't have much. So we're actually going to pick up a cowl, and that cowl will be building towards the spirit visage. Now, you could also do an abyssal if you want to do that, but the spirit visage I think is a little bit better, as much as it doesn't give you AP. Um, it's really awesome because of your ultimate. It's going to give you increased healing when you're using it, which makes you even tankier in a fight because you have that much more health coming back to you. So that's why we're going to be getting that item instead of Abyssal. If you want Abyssal and they're not really doing tons of damage to you, then don't worry about that as much. But here I'm going to live because of that cowl pretty much. Um, so yeah, we're going to go cowl into Spirit Visage instead of the Abyssal. Abyssal's not bad. If you want to, you maybe do that later. It works really, really well if you're just going for pure damage. But if you need some survivability, because Swain does this really good off-tank thing when he engages because of the life always coming back in on that Ravenous Flock, I think the Spirit Visage just treats you a little bit better. So that's why I typically try to build it. So we're going to finish that off now, and uh, we're going to work towards our next items. We'll talk about those in a second as the game gets closer to those two. Um, but right now we're doing pretty good and we're 9 and 2 and 9, so uh, we're doing pretty awesome. Our farm's pretty meh though to be honest, but we haven't been farming, we've been farming people's lives. Here we're just gonna blow up Thresh. Um, yeah, he's, he's dead. A little bit of help though there obviously from my teammates, but Jinx didn't even, I think, attack him there. So, But uh, yeah, gonna pick up the kill there, just quick, easy stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about our recommended runes, I would suggest. I'd go with the Magic Penetration Marks. i go with the Mana Regenning Seals. That's where I get some of my Mana Regen. It uh, is very helpful, so that's about all I need. And then I go with the AP Scaling Glyphs and then AP Quintessences. So those are pretty solid stuff. Level 1, I think you have like 25 AP. And uh, that's obviously going to scale while you're in lane because of those Scaling uh, Glyphs. And those will help you out a little bit. You also have a little bit of mana regen. Here we're going to move top. Hey, look, it's Ash. I think you should die. So, hooray. You, yeah, blown up. Not hardly worth gold anymore anyways. But, uh, yeah, we're going to blow up Ash because it's something to do. But here we need to hustle to mid because their team is moving in. But one nice thing about your W is it has a decent cast range on it. So here they don't really see me. See me. I'm going to be able to cast it. Going to pick up the Lee Sin and the Thresh in it and be able to move in on them. A quick engagement from the side is going to allow us to kill both of them. And uh, our team will be able to push now at this point. Olaf is down in river. He's going to go ahead and retreat back to his base, I think. And we will head up here to this lovely Baron now that we have a people advantage. And uh, that just makes sense, you know? Play the objectives. It's uh, not a game just about killing. I know most of my builds show me murdering people. Um, I have, I think, probably some better just swaying footage, but all the games that end at 20 minutes from surrender. So, But uh, I got a longer one, so we can actually show most of the items. There I take a fantastic Ash Arrow to the face. But uh, we're going to luckily secure that Baron. And uh, it's just, you know, good to pick up Baron. Here their team does show up because they knew we were doing it. That arrow did definitely give it away. Their two most fed champions are here, which is Olaf and Mordekaiser. But we're going to make sure we work on Mordekaiser. We've got to get rid of him. Going to kill him, and then Olaf is going to need to retreat. We will also kill him. And uh, taking out those two is going to allow us to definitely push a little bit now, too. And I think, what, is, is Ash going to die? I'm going to get pulled towards her. Yep, Bonus is going to pick up the kill on her. And I think the rest of them will make a retreat. Or at least I'm not going to chase, because if you overcommit and overchase... All right, maybe I'm going to chase a little bit. Steal the red buff. But if you overchase too long, you might as well go get objectives. Like, as we can see, we need to collapse in on mid, get that in hib. So um, make sure you, you know, go do objectives. You can't just chase them around the jungle, let them all respawn, and then not do anything with it. You got to make sure you get towers, get inhibitors, get dragons, get those barons. That's going to help you out more in the long run. So um, we didn't talk about it yet, but we have a little bit of a different item in our inventory. Not different, but some people rush this with Swain. I haven't rushed it because I didn't feel it necessary in this game. But if you need to rush it a little bit sooner because of their team comp, you can do that. But I have now part of my Zhonya's Hourglass. I had a little bit of armor in there. And that's going to be our next item because it's not only going to help us out with armor, it's going to give us a lot of AP and it'll give us that unique active which will let you go into stasis for two and a half seconds. And if you have your ultimate going while you stasis, it still is continuing because it's already been activated. So you can use your ultimate while you're in that stasis and it's very helpful for not only negating that damage, but then also still dealing that damage. So 
Zonia's Hourglass is kind of a key thing on him. Here we're going to, you know, obviously be in their base. Try to start ending this game up. Here comes that tankier side of Swain where you can kind of just initiate and just... Well, I'm tanking a tower a little bit, I think. Yeah, and then I'm just going to pick up a quick triple kill because Swain... Mostly Swain. So that's what we're going to do there. And that's, you know, pretty solid stuff. That's going to be game, too, if you can't tell. So next we would be picking up that Hourglass. Actually, Lee Sin's going to make a great play here on Hoyt. It's going to be awesome. And you just got kicked into the fountain. But I'll kill him. It'll be okay. But that's going to be the game, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put those down in the comments below. Everything you do need to know, though, is in the description, along with that last item of the build. There goes an arrow for fun. But that's going to be a Swain build. If you have any of those comments, you know, put them down below. But other than that, I'll just see all of you guys in the next build video. Until then, I'm going to try to help my team out as we're next and getting chased. We're going to lock down the team and use the ultimate, all the AoE, pick up a quick double kill. We're going to finish off Soraka here, too, for the triple, and then we're just going to murder Tristana as Blitzcrank tries to come up here and KS this. I have no idea why, but we'll pick up a quick quadra.